Nicodemus asks in our gospel today, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Good morning. morning. And welcome to worship on this, uh, this Holy Trinity Sunday uh, where we celebrate Three and one, one and three, God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I am Pastor Colin Newhart, and if you are, a, whether you are a longtime member or a first time visitor joining us in person or through our online platforms, we welcome you as we welcome Christ into our midst. Just a couple of announcements here. Um, First of all, we have a prayer request. Uh, Christian Bettenhausen, uh, son of Nick and Aaron Bettenhausen, he will be having heart surgery this week. And so we invite your prayers on May 29th, um, on Wednesday, um, for that. I'm told, it's a, I'm told it's a more routine procedure, so, but, we will, our, we, we give our prayers. Um, also, I want to call attention, starting next weekend, next weekend is Synod Assembly, so I will be gone for that. I also uh, covet your prayers for that, for all of us over in Watford City doing the business of the church that God is calling us to. And then following that, I will be on vacation. Uh, If there are any pastoral concerns, either call the office or call Samantha Diley, and she will direct you to the right person for uh, pastoral care. Um, Also, uh, tomorrow is the Memorial Day program, 10.30 a.m. at the American Legion with a meal to follow. Are there any other announcements, corrections, additions? Pastor, um, Joel Zinker says thank you for prayers. He's doing very well, and he would welcome an invitation to preach again with us. Perfect. (laughs) Well, I would happen to have some opportunities there, so. (laughs) All righty. Thank you for the update. I appreciate it. With that, I invite you to rise as we begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness on this Holy Trinity Sunday. In remembrance of our new life in Christ through the waters of baptism, we begin at the baptismal font in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. with you. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory eternal three in one and we praise your power majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died... I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. 
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this day is Psalm 29. We will read it responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O oh Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O oh Lord, the blessings of peace. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading is taken from Romans, the eighth chapter. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. for this Holy Trinity Sunday is according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, 
How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nicodemus asks in our gospel today, how can anyone be born after having grown old? And logically, that's a pretty good question, I think. Jesus replies... Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. A lot of times when we humans think of what being born again or born of the Spirit means, we think of something that we do. And some action that we're supposed to take or like, love Jesus or else. Believe in Jesus or else. But there, there's this book I have. It's called Crazy Talk. And if you're ever into wondering more about what do certain parts of our faith mean and uh, what do certain words we use in our faith mean, I highly recommend it. It's by a seminary professor named Rolf Jacobson. And it's, it, he describes it as a not-so-stuffy dictionary of theological terms. That book has a little different idea, a little different definition of what being born again is, and it actually is um, more, more along the lines of what we Lutherans believe. It says, and I quote, the most common mistake regarding rebirth is to think that it has something to do with our... What was that? Okay, let's try that again. The most common mistake regarding rebirth is, is to think that it has something to do with our own actions or is the product of our own doing. This is just as untrue of spiritual rebirth as it is of physical. To be born again is to live into the promise that is given in baptism. It takes the work of the Holy Spirit and it is done 
for us. Well, would you look at that? We have in front of us a holy mystery, folks. That's, that's the part that Nicodemus, in our gospel today, wasn't understanding. Is that this whole being born of the Spirit thing is a huge mystery, and it's something we don't do. It's something we don't have control over. When Nicodemus hears the terms born again in our gospel, he automatically thinks of it as a biological or physical thing. How can you be born again? It's impossible for that process to happen a second time. And my poor mother. <laughs> That's where Jesus reveals what it means to be born of the Spirit. To be born of the Spirit or to be called God's own is God's action in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. As a high-powered religious leader, Nicodemus was too caught up in Jewish law to really figure that out. So Jesus had to push him towards graciously receiving those acts of love without logical reason or, or there being a rule to clarify such an action. And Jesus continues to push him questioning him as to why he doesn't believe Jesus when talking about these heavenly things. And then we hear possibly one of the most recited Bible verses uh, of all time, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Now from the surface, that's a very logical verse. If we believe in Jesus, we'll have eternal life. Means to an end. We do an action, get a result. A very logical, humanistic way of thinking. And that makes us feel good because we kind of have control over it. But, if we read on what Jesus says in the next verse, that's where the confusion and the mystery come in. Um, if you... If, have, if you've ever read John 3.17, here's what it says. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That's where the mystery comes in, folks. That's where the mystery comes in. Our logical curiosity kicks in and may wonder, well, if Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, what happens to those who don't know Jesus? And, and that's a valid question, I would say. But it is at that point where we are called to trust in God, in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to work through each of us, God's beloved creation. It's all about trusting Jesus, the one who died on the cross and rose again to save the world from sin, and that includes you. We are reminded daily of these mysterious promises through baptism, through water and the word God in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has called you God's own. The work has been done. And that in and of itself is a holy mystery. And the fact that it is a mystery shouldn't get you worked up, but it should bring you comfort. Because that means in our crazy lives as God's creation, that's one less thing we really have to worry about, one less thing on our list. Because God has it figured out. It's a comfort that there is a God who created you, cares for you, and will always be with you till the end of the age. And how God does that could almost be considered irrelevant. It just happens. It's a free and certain gift for you. Today we celebrate 
the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three, and it gets more confusing from there. This is a day to celebrate the mystery of God and let go of that confusion, though. Holy Trinity Sunday invites us to ponder the mystery in a particular way. God is revealed as the Father of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. This day is more about this mystery and much less about how we unravel the confusing doctrine of the Godhead three in one, one in three. The Holy Trinity is about how God comes to us in both ways that we can understand and ways that mystery remains. God the Father is God the Creator, the one who created you and all of the cosmos. God the Son is God made flesh who lived among us and made the ultimate sacrifice to overcome death and darkness for all. And God the Spirit, the mysterious one, the advocate who intercedes for us on our behalf, the one who calls us into God's mission in our lives, the one who guides us in our daily walks of faith. Like Nicodemus in our gospel, We as humans like logic, we like solutions, we like to have control over things. We like to have options. We like to have a means to an end. And that's comfortable, right? It's that sense of control. But as with many things concerned with faith, We are being called to let that mystery be. We do not possess or control the mystery of God, the Holy Trinity. It slips through our fingers like water and wind. Yet, for that very reason, we know that God is there. And above all, We know that God is the one who loves the world into new life. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. time we give thanks to God for God's creation with the blessing of seeds and soil in this time of sowing and planting. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, creator of all things and giver of all life, we come before you for your blessing upon the seed, the livestock, fields, and all things needed for a bountiful harvest. Grant that these may serve to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. A prayer for the seeds. God, you have given us these seeds. Creating God, you have given seed for the sower and bread to the people. Nourish, protect, and bless the seeds which your people sow in hope. By your loving and bountiful giving, may they bring forth their fruit in due season. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And a prayer for the soil. God, you have created and given us this soil. Giver of life, we give you thanks that in the richness of the soil, nature awakens your call to spring. We praise you for the smell of freshly tilled earth awakening blossoms, budding trees, the beauty of a cleanly sown field, and the freshness of new grass. We ask that you help us to be good stewards of the land. Bless the soil to bear bountifully in the name of the one who gives us life, Jesus Christ our Lord. And a prayer for water and rain. God, this water is your creation. Sustaining God, we receive the snows and the rains from you. We give you thanks for the smell of the earth after rain, for its welcome cooling and its necessary hydration for the land. We ask that the rain come as often as it is needed, so crops may flourish and the coming harvest be indeed bountiful through Jesus Christ our Lord. and a prayer for the animals. God, the animals of the field are yours. Caring God who created all beasts and cattle in a wonderful order and gave them into our care. Make us good shepherds of all your creatures. We ask for knowledge to care properly for the animals you have given us, that they may be, st be strengthened and free from disease, in Jesus Christ our Lord. And a prayer for the equipment. God, you bless us with resourcefulness. Gracious Lord, we, 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 we be with us now and bless us as we set apart the equipment to your glory and praise. Grant us diligence and maintenance, safety and caution and use, and patience during breakdowns. Give us the faith to know your gracious purpose in all things, to lead us in building up of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. And a blessing of the sower and producers. God, these are your own sowers and producers. We pray for all who care for the earth and its creatures, the water and the air that riches of your creation may abound from generation to generation. Creator God, you make the grass grow for the cattle and the plants for people to cultivate. You give work as a gift for humans to participate in your creative activities on earth. You call us to produce from the land and your creatures essential elements for nourishment and health for all. Bless our labor and grant us wisdom, safety, and a feeling of satisfaction in our work. Enlighten us with faith to know your gracious purpose in rain or shine, fruitful work or breakdown, is to serve you for your glory and give you thanks in all things through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And at this time, I invite you to rise as we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba God, you have brought us into your family claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality towards all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and deeply rooted trees of the forest. Sustain our earth that it may flourish for generations to come. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give your blessing of peace to the nations. Shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict for that purpose. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another and restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing of any illness of any kind. We especially pray this day for Christian, James, Della, Alice, Joanne, Don, Annette, Michael, Arliss, Lorraine, Marla, Joel, Ruth, and all those we name before you both silently and aloud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families, multi-generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they lived with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another. You may be seated as we share in our tithes and offerings. We give thee but thine own, whatever it may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. We pray, Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self, 
and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. We continue with the words of institution. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great, in, in, in great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached the good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let us remember that this is not my table, this is not your table, this is not St. Luke's table, but this is Christ's table. And all who believe that Jesus Christ is truly present in the, his body and blood as the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of sins are welcome to share in this meal. Uh, please note, we will, uh, given that there are the few and the mighty here, we will form one line for the communion line. Um, all is now ready. Our ushers will attend to us. As you're comfortable, I invite you to rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen, and receive the blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.
serve the Lord. And remember that God loves you and so do I.